the circuit that we are about to see, the source Vs on the left has a value of 10 volts with 30 degrees. And we are tackling part B. We've already shown part A in a previous video. In the circuit, in figure 1 again, we will see that in a moment, replace the 3 negative J3 on branch between node 1 and the reference by a wire. A short circuit, that is. Compute the current flowing from node 1 into that wire and call that ISC. Short circuit current. Compute the actual value of the current and the argument in degrees of that current. Let's have a look at the circuit that preoccupies us, this one. So we are to replace this uh, impedance between node 1 and the reference, 3 negative J3 ohms, by a wire and compute the current through that and call that ISC. Let's do it. So we need to solve this circuit. The first thing we do is we replace the impedance 3 negative J3 ohms by this wire according to the exercise. We need to compute the current in that wire I short circuit, ISC. How? Well, we can apply KCL to this node here. Check it out. Yeah. And it results that I short circuit is the sum of this current A coming from the left plus this current C coming from the right and this current B coming from the top. If we can only find A, B, and C, we can find adding them up in KCL what is I short circuit like this. I, C is A plus B plus C. How do we compute them? Well, let's begin with A. A is very easy to find out. Why? Because we observe that this branch on the left is an RV branch, sort of. And the current in an RV branch is voltage of the origin, 0 volts, minus voltage of the destination of the current, 0 volts, plus the value of the helping source, x divided by the ohms in the branch, 2,2. You see that current A is x divided by 2,2. Bingo, we know who is x. x is 10 with 30 degrees. We're just representing that with an x and 730 with a y because it's easier to write equations with that instead of writing complex numbers in polar form. At least that is the way I do things. That is A. We can compute them in the calculator, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Now, how do we find B and C? We can add that so that we can add uh, those two together with A and find ISC. We solve this circuit on the right. We need V1. We need the voltage of this node because with that one, we can say the current C is V1 divided by 2, comma negative 2, and the current B on the top is another RV branch is V1 plus the helping source 5 minus 0 divided by 2. We need V1. Solve V1. How? The circuit on this part is a circuit with only one node a part of the reference. And check it out. This is reference. This is reference too. So it has only one node, node 1. We need only one case hill equation. And that is what I'm about to write. Case hill equation down here. Currents going in the node is only why this source. Why? We know what Y is, right? It's 7,3. Absolutely. And that is equal to the currents leaving. The one down here is V1 over 2, V1 over 2, plus the one on the horizontal um, a branch here, V1 divided by 2, comma negative 2, V1 divided by 2, a ne negative 2, plus the one on the top, V1 plus 5 divided by 2, V1 plus 5 divided by 2. We can of course, use a calculator to solve for V1, but I'm not going to do that. Check it out. You don't need a fancy calculator to solve for this one. 5 over 2, that can move subtracting to the left-hand side, Y minus 5 over 2. And then you can factor out V1 from here, and you get 1 over 2, 1 over 2, negative 2, 1 over 2. And all of those coefficients, they move dividing to the other side, and you get that V1 is just Y minus 5 over 2 divided by 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 comma negative 2 plus 1 over 2. And now you use any cheap calculator to compute the value of V1. And once you have V1, you can compute the current B, which is this one, V1 plus 5 over 2, and the current C, which is V1 over 2 comma negative 2. Once you have those two, you add them together with A, and you find who is ISC. Uh, let's put all of those expressions together, right? You solve for V1, mm -hmm. and then you can write that ISC 
is this one x over 2 2 which is a plus this one v divided by 2 negative 2 that is c plus v1 plus 5 over 2 which is b and we just now a calculator to compute that um, but instead of just writing that down some of you asked me that I did that on the HP 50G and do that slowly you said so let me do that slowly very very slowly going through every little detail how to create variables how to use those global variables to substitute the complex numbers in polar form which you remember we cannot type complex numbers in polar form in uh, the equation writer but this is a workaround I, and, and you shall see the first thing we do before starting to perform any complex number computation on the HPG at least what I do is I go to mode to CIS and check that all the radio buttons are off in this case approximate computations on complex numbers are on I don't want that all of them off uncheck that one and uncheck the complex number as well unchecked okay and okay we are ready next the expression we're going to evaluate has an external variable the value of the source 7 with 30 degrees I call that y in my expression so let's define the variable of y 7 spice 30 degrees before actually typing in a complex number always make sure if it's in rectangular or in polar form we need it in polar form because our external constant is in polar form and uh, if we're using polar form make sure it is in degrees or you're going to get very strange results polar form degrees 7 with 30 degrees stack to complex number and that number is going to be the only external variable I will use in the first expression so let me get out of the menu for complex number I don't want to change that oops I don't want to change that so let me go back to the main menu and there is where I will define my general global variables the variable y which is 7 with 30 degrees how apostrophe alpha y the name of the variable enter and then we go to store and it stores whatever is in level 2 in the variable whose name I am defining in level 1 will store 7 with 30 degrees in variable y store you see that there now y is one of my global variables in the home directory it's time for us to compute the expression we want to solve let me go to the equation writer and there we write the expression right y minus 5 divided 2 highlight highlight the whole numerator three times divide and now I write the denominator 1 over 2 highlight that plus um, 1 divided by and here it works 2 redshift comma when I do that immediately the calculator knows it's a complex number and I only have to write the, the 2 change sign because it's 2 negative 2 highlight highlight I need to to select what I'm going to add to to that one I'm going to add a 1 over 2 and that is the expression for v1 again enter it's on the stack the variable y has been defined as a global variable previously if I press the key eval it will substitute this y in the expression give us the numeric value of the whole thing let's see eval bingo that is an easier way of computing the value of an expression now that we have a one 392 with 33.2 degrees let's create a variable v1 and store that value into that because we will be using v1 
twice in the next expression. Look over here. V1 is here and there. And x as well. Let's create x too. So 392 with 33 degrees. So sure. Apostrophe, name of the new variable, v1. Enter. And then what? Store. So it stores the value on level 2 in the variable name on level 1 that I'm about to create. Store. You see, now I have the variable y that I don't need anymore and the variable v1. Look, it's there, v1. Delete. But I also need to create the variable x, this one, which is given the problem. It is 10 with 30 degrees. So let's create that one. Parentheses, 10, alpha, red, 6, 30 degrees. Why am I not typing that and entering that on the stack? Because I am not inside the complex numbers um, directory and I'm too lazy to go there. So enter, variable x, apostrophe, x, enter, store. There. We have the variable x and the variable v1 among the defined variables. We can go to the equation writer and write the second expression, which is x divided by 2 comma 2, 2 red comma 2, highlight, highlight the whole thing, plus v1, alpha v1, divided by 2 comma negative 2, 2 comma, 2, change sign, a highlight, highlight, the whole thing, plus uh, v1 plus 5 over 2, plus alpha v1 plus 5, highlight, highlight, divided by 2. That is the expression I need to evaluate for ISC. Enter. There is the expression. And we can see the expression because our flags for approximate computation is off. That's why it's so important that I can have that. Normally I enter at least once, so I keep as a safeguard the expression there. So if I discover that my final answer is wrong, I can always go back to the original expression and edit that to correct it and try to evaluate that instead of having to retype it all over again. Right now, the variable x is defined here, the variable v1 is defined. So I just type evaluate and the calculator gives us the value of the current that we need to answer for part b. 798 amps with 10.9 degrees. And that was the answer to part b, at least the longest answer. Later on, I'll show you a very quick way of finding that that takes only one division, I promise. But this is the canonical solution. Thank you very much.